Um, Brief, how would you how would you describe to to viewers like what are we trying to do with this project? Because there's a lot of writing about the climate, but what is it specifically that we're trying to do with this? Uh, man, thanks a lot, Sean, and thanks for having me on this program. Uh, so, I mean, generally, what we're trying to do, as you've said, I mean, there's a lot that's been written about uh, climate problem, about tax issues about extractive industries uh, generally across the world and uh, even specifically on Africa. What we're trying to do with this project is really to go a little bit deeper, right? So the general idea, the first instance is we're talking about decolonization. So how do we decolonize discussions about climate justice, about uh, sort of extractive industries, about tax issues, how do we center African narratives and African ways, you know, like African analysis about these kinds of things. So we're, going to, we're trying to go a little bit deeper Everybody agrees there's a problem. Uh, climate change is a problem. That is certainly not up for debate. But we have solutions on the table. And what we're trying to do in this project is essentially try to say, can we critically engage with these solutions, right? Can we critically engage with this solution? Uh, for example, one of our first, pe first pieces that went up yesterday by Keston Perry uh, was generally just trying to say, you know, some climate initiatives that are being sort of coming out of the US and that are supposed to have an impact on Africa uh pretty much uh replicating imperialism you know pretty much replicating and reinforcing capitalism so that's the kind of kind of critical discourses that we're trying to do we're really trying to interrogate what seem like obvious solutions but then these obvious solutions always have very sort of interesting types of uh uh processes so that's what we're trying to do with this particular series of uh posts nice so so keston perry's piece everyone should go read it it's fantastic and, and we plan more of these pieces, right? Uh, and I think we also want to do a takeover of the live stream show sometime later this fall. Can you say more about that, Grief? Uh, yeah, I think so. The general idea is, for example, Keston wrote what I think is an incredibly important piece, an incredibly important intervention, right? Uh, and what we would like him to do, obviously, is to one day show up on the live stream uh, and we have a chat with him, right, about his piece. And we sort of ask him, what possessed you to write this piece? What sort of upset you? What sort of got you th moved to write an 800 word piece on climate imperialism and the US elections, you know? What was the motivation? Where do you want this conversation to go? Who are you speaking to when you write this? From what perspective are you writing? So really just sort of, we, we've got the writers, but we always want to go inside their heads and have them explain mm -hmm. to us why they bother to write these things in the first place. And so we're going to take over the live stream uh, uh, platform in a couple of months' time, and then we will be talking to a lot of our, our guests. And the yeah. next piece, just quickly before we move on to like what the next phase of this project will be, the next piece, um, just to give viewers like a, like a little uh, taste, will be by... Olufemi O. Taiwo, uh, who is a philosopher at George Georgetown, I think I might be getting it is, this wrong. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, right. Yeah, at Georgetown. Yeah, and he's got a piece. Well, 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 approvingly. Sorry. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big <laughs> fan. I'm a big fan of Femi. Oh, okay, that's nice. I'll, I'll tell Femi that. Uh, so basically, it's in the same tradition where you know he's interrogating a climate change solution, which is not controversial, but tends to be controversialized by, for example, northern activists whereas it might not seem so controversial for Global South activists. So this is the kind of stuff that we are trying to really bring to the fore, that their perspectives, their Southern perspectives on solutions to climate change, their Southern perspectives on solutions to extractive industries, their, climate, uh, their sort of Southern perspectives on issues to do with tax, right? We have nuanced perspectives and we want to bring these perspectives to bear on this particular series. That's the general thrust. Yeah. And so, as I said, the, the the sort of alluding, we have kind of like three phases to the whole thing. And the phase one is these, you know, this kind of set of articles, uh, boarding up the debate, bringing in all these these other voices, particularly African voices. The next phase, we plan to make a film. Yeah, we plan to make a film. I've always wanted to make a film, Sean. And then Sean came to me and he said, Dave, that's lunch. What are you going to make a film about? And then I said, can I make this film about City of Lusaka, my darling football club? <laughs> so, yeah, the general idea... Yeah, is have... Can I just say as you move on? I've never been a club. And I do know something about Korean football, but I'm just messing with you. Maybe there needs to be a film then. Maybe there needs to be a film about this team that no one's heard of. No, it's only you guys who are so not decolonized. Who, who said about everybody who, who anybody has said about us. Uh, but yeah, so we're trying to make a film 
really what we're trying to hone into is this discussion about extractive industries. As you know, the history of Africa is a history of natural resource exploitation, extractive industry exploitation. It's a history of oil, gold, all these kinds of things. What we're trying, and then in that history, there's a whole thesis about the resource curse, right? That just having resources is a curse in and of itself. What we want to do is to interrogate this particular hypothesis in, in film, in documentary yeah. form. Uh, and uh, we're still trying to think how we're going to do this. And we've got like a bunch of ideas about how we're going to do it. We speak to a bunch of interesting people to do it. We'll go shoot in very interesting places. But this is a general thrust of the film, right? I don't want to call it a film, you know, then yeah, I feel like- I much away. I mean, the whole idea is not to make like something that is inaccessible, that people can't see. We want to make this film publicly available. Of course, we, you know, we want it to be seen that, on, on like streaming platforms. So it's a short film, <laughs> before we be modest, um, but we, we want to say something with it. We want to interview yeah. people, you know, visu like make something very visually uh, arresting. Yeah. Yeah. So the right. important thing, the important yeah, thing about ahead. this project is, is that, I mean, the third phase, and this relates, I guess, is probably what informs this entire project, is that we want to amplify the voices of Africans and the front lines of struggles around climate and tax justice. You're right. I think you put it very well. I mean, there's obviously, you know, uh, believe it or not, the one billion of us also have views on this thing, very strong views, very you know, nuanced views, very complicated views. And this entire project is just trying to bring all these views to bear in a way that sort of we allow, we talk to each other, but we also speak to the rest of the world about these kinds of things. So you're very right, Will. You hit uh, the nail on the head. Yeah, and just just I'll just quickly add to this. The third phase, uh, we will we will work with. Act, we'll try to amplify the voices of these. So in this first phase, we getting more so like public intellectuals writing. In the third phase, we're gonna we're gonna uh, amplify the voices of people working um, in these various uh, social movements. You know, and we're kind of doing some of this work already, mm -hmm. trying to bring some of that uh, work to the front. And we've done that. If you look at the site, we've done it with other projects where we've looked at. Um, uh, Although we, we, we could have done more on particularly social movements in places like Tanzania, um, South Africa, but we want to bring that out more on a continental level. Grief, I'm going to I'm going to ask you like one other question about this, which I'm hoping you will, uh, you, you won't be afraid to answer it. What do you, what do you, what do you make of sort of the Green New Deal? Because the Green New Deal, which is a US initiative, and there's, there's a lot of hype around it. I mean, it came from Alexandro Caso Cortez, who's seen as on the left in the US. She partnered with um, Ed Markey, who is uh, uh, from Massachusetts, who's a much older um, public representative in the US House, um, to push this thing, to make it happen. All these American political candidates, they signed up to it, the ones who wanted to be Democratic, not Republican, but the ones who run for the Democratic um, uh, nomination. I think Joe Biden, I'm not sure if he's a signatory, but they all seem to say, you know, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, they all said they for it. What do you how I mean what, what do you make us of, of, of this because in America people are very excited about it like if you watch it from like you know this from southern Africa I mean so I think this is why the series that we're doing is so important because for example before I read Keston Perry's essay I was rather sort of indifferent I mean I was partial towards it I'm still partial towards it as an idea as an as a principle but they're the nuts and bolts of it and this is, I think, what we want to do with this series, just get into the nuts and bolts and sort of figure out who's going to finance the Green New Deal, right. who's going to finance certain aspects of it. And when you dig deeper, for example, at least that's what I learned from Keston's essay, right? You find that Wall Street banks, uh, you know, the Goldman Sachs, because now it's very, uh, you know, sexy to do some, to be seen to be part of these kinds of things. So Goldman Sachs might be financing some aspects of the Green New Deal. Uh, you know, the, the good old uh, conglomerates, the old multinationals that have caused so much damage, either in terms of labor or in terms of the environment, are now switching and, and being a part of the Green New Deal. So I think the, the basic point is, as an idea, it's great. But what we ought to think about and worry about are the nuts and bolts of it. And I think this is what some of our, this is what our series is going to be doing, right? Getting these sort of uncontroversial ideas that most people are partial to and trying to say, what does this really mean for... Uh, Financialization. What does this really mean for labor? You know, it's not. It's not. A, it's. It's not great if we have a green new deal that requires lithium batteries, but the lithium is sourced from you know Bolivia, and then there's all sorts of bad things happening there, right? Then we have to really bring all those issues to the table. So, Sean, that's a very complicated way of saying it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're going to do with our series. 
This is exactly why we are, we are, you know, we are like uh, pulling out our hairs with this series. This is what we are trying. These are kind of conversations we want to spark in people, right? But we want to take non-controversial ideas, but go underneath, sort of like right. go deep and sort of figure out what. So, means. so one, one, one last question. It's just a quick question. Uh, Oxfam released yesterday that the the world's top one percent wealthiest countries are responsible for two thirds of global pollution. What's your hardest take on that? I think we've always known that, right? Well, I mean, we've always known, I mean, uh, you know, the global South Africa in general has hardly industrialized. So we haven't added anything to the carbon footprint. So I'm, I'm not very surprised. And I think, and there's some ethical issues there, right? There's some very complicated ethical issues uh, that one has to deal with. But I think it's not surprising, Will, that uh, the global north is so responsible for all this carbon, is incredibly responsible for all this uh, climate change that's going on. Uh, but then that presents very interesting ethical challenges. And I think some of the writers in the series, I think uh, the philosopher Olufemi Otaiwo, you know, these are some of the issues that they'll be dealing with, trying to make us sort of figure out what does this really mean? What does this mean for development? What does this really mean for climate justice issues? What does this really mean for climate solutions? I mean, the first thing that this means to me, Will, is uh, the global north should really shut up, you know, when it comes to <laughs> 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 the global north, yeah. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so folks like Sean, Sean, you should not lead the discussion. About <laughs> You've already done damage. Okay, today, right. twice now, first week, you have said that I'm not decolonized <laughs> and you called me the global north. You are. I'm going to take these things in stride. Anyway, they, oh look at look at well <laughs> okay. There's a question on the on the on the YouTube channel. I'm not sure if we can answer this question right now, agree, but maybe we could sort of be we could try. It's by Lee Wengraf asking, saying that the project sounds amazing. Do you know which regions which regions you might look at in particular for the film? Ah, interesting. So hi Lee. Uh, Lee is uh, <laughs> is a friend of the site. As Def, well as uh, most deaf, most deaf. Shout out to me. Yeah, that's right. A friend of uh, I, I, I read, I read the book. I mean, excellent book. Uh, so we haven't, you know, we haven't really thought deeply about that, but we're taking ideas. So uh, if Lee has ideas, please like send them our way. Uh, I mean, we obviously, I mean, when you think about extractives, right? Extractives are really uh, well, very heavily represented across the continent. You know, there's gas or oils, gas in Mozambique. There's gas or oil somewhere in Tanzania and Uganda. There's oil, obviously, in West Africa. There's some stuff in Angola. You know, there's some stuff somewhere in Central Africa. So really, we're spot for choice, you know, in, in that way. But we haven't really sort of narrowed down in a particular region. We might just do the whole thing, or maybe we might do bits and pieces. But we're, we're open for ideas. We're really open for ideas. I think of that, we should probably, we don't want to keep Grievia too long. We, I, I'm, this project is for yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Grievia. We, 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 we think we're sort of feeling our way through it. And I think we're trying to bring really um, exciting views of people to the fore. Um, so yeah, we want to um, oh, that somebody just, somebody. <laughs> 100%. The global north should shut up. I, I need that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's Takondwa, you know. So I think Takondwa is uh, broadcasting from Dublin. <laughs> Hi, take, on, take on underscore dua. I think she's. Uh, the, I think I'm on the attack today, bro. I'm on the attack. <laughs> Any, yeah, anyway, a, Sean, enough from you. Uh, Grief, thank, <laughs> you. thank you so much for, for coming on to the show. Um, and we look forward to seeing what happens with this project. And it sounds exciting.